Hello and welcome to the Cup of Tri Triathlon podcast. We're brought to you every week by our sponsors, Team Oxygen Addict, who are online triathlon coaching, event specific training plans, coaching guidance from me, Coach Rob Wilby, and supportive teammates in a private Facebook group. And we're also brought to you by our patrons who support the show with a monthly donation. Now, you guys will probably know Helen's not here this week. She's off away on her holly bobs. So I'm flying solo. So I'm just going to do a little short introduction this week, cover some of the news and the things that have been happening because there's, there's quite a lot going on actually. So I want to do a little bit of introduction. And the first thing I wanted to do was thank all of you who've signed up to be patrons of the show this week. We've had a another bonanza week. We're really, really grateful to all of you. Uh, most of you will know if you've been listening regularly, we added the option to be an annual patron recently so you can kind of make a one-off payment to support the show Um, and loads of people have really gone for it and are supporting us so we're really super grateful so this week's thanks in no particular order go to Fran White, Neil Feekins, Joe Scott Dalgleish, Pat Walkington, Jason Eagleston, Joanna Grundle, Kirsten Owen, Simon Shaw and James Corlett thanks very much to all of you for supporting us We've now got nearly 60 patrons for the show, which is just brilliant. And we never imagined when we started the show all those, uh, all those, well, over two years ago now that we'd have such a brilliant community rallying around us. So thanks very much. You guys will all get access as a, by way of a thank you, we've put together a special patrons only podcast. We've got about an hour long interview with Joe Skipper. We've got Harry Wiltshire. We've got Lucy Gossage. We've got three or four other people on there as well with uh, with some shorter clips. But the podcast is going to run to about an hour and a half. And it's our way of saying thank you to you guys for supporting us. So that's going to be released the day before New Year's Eve. So if you guys want to sign up and support and get access to that special patrons only podcast, you can do that by going to our patrons page, which is at oxygenatic.com forward slash patrons, or just you can follow oxygenatic.com forward slash podcast and just click on the link that goes through to become a patron. And it's all pretty straightforward on there. Um, And anybody who signs up to be a patron before the 31st of December is going to get a a surprise from us in in the new year. We're not going to say what it is yet, but we've got something lined up for February of this year. And you guys are going to get a special thank you from us when that happens. So uh, yeah, you got to be in it to win it. Anyway, so Helen is currently, she sent me a little photograph earlier on today. She's over in uh, over in Canada visiting family and it was, what was the number? Minus, my, I don't know, minus 20 degrees centigrade or something today over there. So if you're in Great Britain and you're feeling a bit sorry for yourself that it's a bit chilly this morning, it's not as chilly as it is for Helen. So uh, yeah, so I hope you're having fun out there, Hells. I'm sure you're listening. Uh, And let's take us over to our news from this week. So I think the first up, we've got to say the first news is Ali Brownlee finishing second at the Sports Personality of the Year Award. So any foreign listeners, that's a a big yearly um, sports recognition award run by the BBC over here. And it's a really big deal. And for Ali to finish second, I think, shows a couple of things. It shows, firstly, that the triathlon community over here really got together. There was something like 120,000 votes for him. So that's pretty full on. Uh, it goes to show how much the profile of triathlon has been raised over the last sort of four to five years in the UK with the success of those guys at the Olympics. Um, and also, I think it just goes to show how much his profile was raised with helping his brother out during uh, during the Cozumel incident so really chuffed for you mate you couldn't couldn't quite take down Andy Murray this time but who knows maybe next year when you've won Kona hey <laughs> we'll see next bit of news that we saw um, and this is interesting because we've got this young lady on the show next week team free speed have announced their their team members for the next 12 months so a lot of you all know they're a team based out of london that sponsor really good age group athletes we've had andy greenleaf on the show um and they've announced that ruth purbrook uh, who's 27 and from full on try she's been offered a place on their team for this year she's she's won her age group at the wiesbaden 70.3 this year and she finished third at the world 70.3 championships helen's done a brilliant interview with her that we're going to have on the show next week 
Um, so you can tune in to listen to all of that. But she's super talented and she's stepping up to race Kona next year. So, yeah, tune in next week to hear that interview with Helen. So congratulations, Ruth. Team Free Speed have got a fantastic setup. They get some really good kit sponsorship and support from the Free Speed guys down in London. So I'm sure that will move you on to another level. So great stuff for you. Uh, next piece of news I saw was that the Long Course Weekend have expanded. Now, for those of you who haven't heard that, Long Course Weekend uh, originated in Wales on the same course as the Ironman Wales course. And they basically run an Ironman broken up across a weekend where you do the swim on the, the same course as the Ironman Wales swim will be. On the, uh, on the Friday night, you do the bike course as a sportif on the Saturday and then the marathon as a run on the Sunday. And they've announced that they're expanding into Mallorca. That's going to take place in 2017 on the... Uh, date isn't out yet, actually. November 2017, it says. It's going to be in Alcudia, so all bets are saying that that's going to be on the same course as the recently discontinued Ironman Mallorca course so again that's still to be announced but that'll make a brilliant end of season blowout for anybody who wants to go down and get some winter sun so I think that's going to be uh, that's going to be a fantastic race so good work there um, and the last bit of news that we saw is that Boardman have announced that they're going to be opening finally this was we talked about this a while ago actually the Boardman Centre has been granted uh planning approval for their performance centre. It's going to be at the Valley Retail Park near Evesham in Worcestershire and as well as having the head office there, they're going to build a cycling specific wind tunnel. Now I've read a few interviews with Chris Boardman where he's been talking about wanting to bring wind tunnel testing to the masses by by having it being cheaper than it currently is available. There's a couple of places where it's available and if you've listened to our interview that we did with Matt Botterill earlier this year, you'll know that he's done a lot of wind tunnel testing and some of the performance gains that they get from being in the wind tunnel are absolutely phenomenal the time savings are are huge and in fact I was talking with my mate Chris Standage who you'll have heard us talk about last week he was the, the first one over the line at uh, 70.3 <sighs> oh where was it 70.3 not Bahrain last week ah it's gone my mind's gone blank but he was in the wind tunnel earlier this year and, and he got some amazing results from there they, they've reduced his drag numbers enormously so very excited to see Boardman bring this to fruition once it gets built I think we should try and get ourselves down there and try and do a podcast from there I think it'd be absolutely fascinating so good work Chris Boardman um, very excited to see how this all rolls out so again, that news section there was brought to us uh, courtesy of our patrons. And I'm going to read this out. We got a, an email through from Simon Shaw. So thanks for becoming a patron, Simon. He says, since discovering the show earlier this year, it's been a weekly highlight that along with IM Talk helps both inspire and make more manageable those hard turbo sessions that you've helped convince me was such a good idea. Here's a picture I'm proud of. Crossing the finish line first and filthy after this year's Chillum Castle Duathlon. A great end to the season. Well suited for a whippet like me with a cross-country pedigree. Keep up the good work and happy Christmas. So thanks for taking the time to write, Simon. Really appreciate that. And to be compared with IM Talk, those guys were my uh, my inspiration when I started this originally. So really appreciate that. Okay. Moving on, we're going to do uh, we're going to do Coach's Couch this week. So Coach's Couch is sponsored by Team Oxygen Addict, which is my triathlon coaching team. The uh, team's not open at the moment, but we're going to be opening for new memberships in January of this year, in mid-January. So if you're interested in what we've got to offer and you like what we've been talking about, so get over to the website, which is team.oxygenaddict.com, and uh, if you go there, there's a waiting list you can click. Just add your email and we will give you notification when um, when we open up. There's also the option to get a free four, four week training plan from us um, to tide you over the, the Christmas period before we open. So go over and check that out. Team Oxygen Addict is essentially an event specific training plan written by me so it's tailored to the event that you're going to be doing. Uh, you're going to get funneled into one of several different levels of training plans so it will be appropriate for the level of training history that you've got and the background you've got to address whichever weaknesses and limiters you have be it 
win, bike or run. Uh, but the thing that's really cool about it, we started a Facebook group, a private Facebook group. Then the idea was I was going to be giving out coaching advice in there. And I do do that. But one of the biggest things we found is the teammate interaction that goes on. They are helping each other out, patting each other on the back, giving each other a chin up when things are not going so well. It's a really great group. We've got close to 70 members in there now, so it's been a it's been a roaring success, and and I'm really chuffed because obviously, I really hoped it was going to be good, and you just never know when you launch something like this. But the feedback we've got has been overwhelmingly positive, and I'm just I'm just really grateful that that it worked the way we hoped that it would. So yeah, we're opening in mid uh, mid January. Get yourself down on the, the waiting list there and you'll see if you're around Facebook, there's adverts for us. So click on the link through there and you can pick up a free four week training plan to get you through the Christmas period. And our question this week is from Matt Mills. Matt says, I'm living in a very hilly area. What's the best way to maintain e-pace running without my heart rate going through the roof? So first up, I'll address that phrase e-pace. E-pace or endurance pace or easy pace comes from the book, The Jack Daniels Running Formula, which regular listeners will have heard me talking about. If you've not read the book, The Jack Daniels Running Formula, firstly, it's not about drinking whiskey and going for a run. I think it's the best all round readable book on physiology for runners and triathletes that's out there. If you're any kind of triathlon geek, and I imagine if you're listening to this, you probably are, you'll just love the way it's written. Um, It's very readable. He's got loads of training plans for running stuff in there. But what he does is Jack Daniels was or is a, a doctor of physiology. And having done hundreds and thousands of tests on people on treadmills, he did regression analysis and said people with a VO2 max value of this can run at these paces for these kind of sessions. So he breaks it down to be threshold pace is exactly this pace. So there's no guesswork whether you're running at your, your threshold pace. He'll give you the pace to run at. And I think given the, the fact everyone's got GPS units these days, you know that wasn't even invented when when he'd come up with his book so if you've got a gps unit train by pace it's the most accurate way to go and he's got a kind of five pace system that's got e pace for endurance m pace for marathon or tempo running t pace for threshold based running and then he's got i pace which is essentially vo2 max pace or hard interval running paces so you'll always know that you're running exactly the right pace to get the kind of physiological change that you want it's what i use to coach my athletes on their running and it makes you running it takes away the guesswork essentially you'll know exactly the pace that you're running at now then the big challenge with all of this is if you're running on hills going uphill or downhill obviously we know it's harder to run uphill and it's easier to run downhill and if you maintain let's say your e-pace is five minutes a kilometer if you maintain five minutes a kilometer running up a hill of any kind of steepness you'll know that your heart rate rises significantly your breathing rate rises significantly and that tells us there's a much greater physiological cost to running uphill and until recently we couldn't find a way to quantify it Um, If you've got a running power meter, obviously that's simple, that's solved for you. Use that and it tells you exactly the power numbers. But most people haven't got one still. And so the question is, you know, what on earth do I do to change that pace around? And what I would say to you is there is a way to do this. If you've if you haven't got yourself a Training Peaks account at trainingpeaks.com, get yourself one. Learn how to use it. The free or there's, there's a free version of it anyway. And you can upload your GPS file into it. And one of the really nifty features that they've got within Training Peaks is once you've uploaded your run file and you go in and you analyze your run pace, they've got a metric in there called NGP, which stands for Normalized Graded Pace, which essentially means it's adjusted to take account of the fact you were running uphill or downhill. So they use the GPS data to work out whether you were running uphill or downhill. And then the algorithm does the work in the background to work out what the the normalized pace or the physiological cost of running up that hill was. And it gives you a number that tells you if you were running on the flat, you would be running at this pace. So I've got some information up on the screen here from a guy that I coach, a guy called Alex, who's a, a very good runner. And 
his e pace is it's in the realm of about 4:45 a kilometer to give you a to give you an idea of the kind of runner he is he's about a 17 minute flat 5k runner and he went out and did some hill repeats on a session i gave him the other day the session was six repeats of two minutes up a hill and i told him i wanted him running really hard it's kind of a vo2 max type effort um and if he'd just gone off his gps watch looking down his average pace on these two minute reps according to the gps unit was 525 a kilometer so significantly slower than his e-pace by about 40 seconds a kilometer or a minute a mile so looking at his gps reading he'd have thought he was running slowly the normalized graded pace for these runs was 310 to 315 per kilometer and my my little chart on the wall here tells me that that would be about 5.15 a mile for those of you who work in minutes per mile still. So he was running blooming fast. You know, the, the equivalent of running on the flat was very, very fast indeed. So the question here that's come in from Matt Mills is a really good one. If you're just looking at your watch and you're trying to maintain your e-pace, obviously my athlete Alex was running up a steep hill here. But any kind of hill is going to affect your running pace. And if you are running over steeper hills and you're looking down and, you, you know, you're going to give yourself a bit of leeway, but you probably wouldn't think you need to give yourself that much leeway. The normalized graded pace metric within Training Peaks is telling us here that it's more than two minutes a kilometer different between the pace he's seeing on his watch and the real pace he would be running for the same phys physiological effort if he was running on the flat. So... My advice to you, Matt, is to go away, upload one of these runs, um, come back, upload it, analyze it. When you do your run, what I'd advise you to do is take a split on your watch every time the terrain changes. So as you start to go up a hill, take the split. As you get to the top of the hill, take a split. As you run over the top and you get to the bottom of the hill, take a split again. And then when you upload the file, it's going to be really easy for you to see the different laps within training peaks. And it'll be obvious as you look at average pace and normalized graded, normalized graded pace next to each other, what the difference between those two runs is. And with a little bit of trial and error, you'll be able to work out the difference between the two and after a couple of runs of doing this you'll be able to work out that okay if I'm if I'm wanting to maintain the physiological cost of running at my e pace or let's say it's five minutes a k I'll need to back it off probably two minutes a k if Alex's numbers are anything to go off here and run at seven minutes a k on my watch to get the same physiological cost as it would be running on the flat so Hope that helps you. Um, some rough rules of thumb there for you, but you're going to have to go away and do a little bit of trial and error. A real good measure of this is going to be if you can keep your heart rate steady or relatively steady, then that's you're in the right ballpark. And it's okay to walk on the steeper hills. Give yourself, especially at this time of year, this has been recorded in, in sort of late December, it's okay to back it right off. I know when I was in my prime and I was racing and I was, you know, at the pointy end of races for a little while, I would back it right off on the hills and sometimes would let myself walk when I was doing e-pace runs so that I didn't get that big spike in heart rate because if that's what you're doing, if you're out for the long steady run and the aim of your long steady run is to get yourself acclimated to running at a long slow pace and get yourself running at the top of the aerobic zone and you want to keep yourself in that, I hate to use the phrase fat burning, but that's what it's there for. It's to get your body more efficient at metabolizing fat for a fuel if you spike your heart rate and you spike yourself into burning much more carbs very quickly it's going to be much less efficient a run at doing that so have a clear purpose what your runs for and if it is that run of the week that's there for the you know the longer aerobic top of aerobic zone adaption really make sure that you're sticking yourself to that and if you need to walk that's okay no one else is going to care except on race day when you go ahead and beat them all right so thanks very much for the question matt we really appreciate it Okay then, we're going to take us over now to our interview of the week. Our interview is this week, it's with Keith Davis. Keith is the race director of Xterra Wales and we talked about Xterra Wales a few weeks ago. Um, Helen was really excited about it. She is going to go down, I think her, her better half Rich is taking part in it and she was considering it for a while but she's not going to now. And Keith got in touch and, and we love the story of how he's got Xterra Wales um, back on the map in the UK. 
So Helen did a great interview with him. I'm not going to spoil any of it. I'll just hand you over now to our interview with Helen and Keith Davis of Exeter Wales. Keith Davis, hello and welcome to the Cup of Tri Triathlon podcast. How are you? I'm very well. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's great to have you on, Keith, because Exeter is coming back to the UK next year and you're the guy behind it, aren't you? I am, yes, yes. We've, um, I've been um, in love with Exterra for many, many years, um, mainly because my wife, she competed since 2002. Um, we've seen the, the rise and fall of Exterra in the UK, um, and, well, we just don't want it to leave the shores. We want it here to stay. Tell us a bit about the history of Exterra in the UK, because, as you say, it, it sort of did come, then it went, and then it came again. So why, why is that? It was here um, back in the early 2000s when it was based down in Minehead. It came back uh, 2006 in Wales, then it went to, to England. I just think that because it doesn't have the backing of uh, British triathlon, controversially, some people might agree or disagree with that, um, it, it just, it's just not a focus for many triathletes in the UK. But it is such a challenge. It's not um, your normal triathlon. It's very exciting racing. It's obviously very tough. The course that we have here in Exterra Wales, especially the run, is absolutely brutal. Um, <laughs> it's, it's got a, it's got a lot to offer, uh, but because it hasn't got that Olympic focus, I, it's just it just seems to be lost on a lot of uh, British triathletes and on British triathlon as well. But I think that they they are missing a trick. It makes for spectacular TV. I can I can talk all day on it. I suppose why there has been a rise and fall. And Keith, why should uh, someone who's maybe looking at events for next season and perhaps they're skimming through an Olympic distance or they're thinking, oh, I might might go for Olympic or maybe I'll go for seventy point three? Why should they go for X Terra perhaps instead or in addition to? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. Um, it is. Um... The, the event is not is you know it's a it's it's a round and Olympic distance event but um, if anyone has ever ridden a mountain bike race or uh, you know or done a, on a, an off road uh, duathlon they know that it takes a lot longer especially if if the conditions are um, rainy and wet which it obviously it never is in Wales it's always nice and sunny and there's never <laughs> any mud about but you know you could be talking you know it could take you two hours to do, to do the bike course. And then it can take you an hour and ten maybe to do to do the run because of how wet and slippery it is. This is adventure and racing. It's just not your standard triathlon. And a little bit more about the, the course, I suppose I'll tell you about that. We've we um it's a sea swim, uh a two lap sea swim. We're not doing an Australian exit. That's off our own personal slipway that we have here at UWC Atlantic College. We actually developed uh, the rib here at Atlantic College and gave it to the lifeboat service. And we had a lifeboat set, uh, station here for many years. Our sea safety crew actually um, uh, crew the boats down at time and Wales as well. So there's a lot of experience. We know the water really, really well here. The bike course, uh, it was master planned by uh, Davis Davis, who's in the Mountain Bike Hall of Fame for his work uh, on designing trails. So you can't get, he's sort of, mountain bike uh, royalty or guru um, and the course has been built by a chap called Gareth Rees who's he built most of David's um, courses uh, throughout South Wales he's been abroad building courses and he, Gareth built the um, the Olympic legacy course the run is um, as I said is pretty br brutal we have Tudor uh, formal gardens so grade one heritage listed gardens we have 122 steps um, and it's a three lap course that takes you up those steps every single lap. Uh, so you've got to do 122 be... steps each lap. Each lap. Um, <laughs> and then we take you through the forestry. You've got to, um, you know, you're going to be jumping over a stream, brooks, fallen trees. It's going to be tough. I say it will be. It's absolutely brutal. But a breathtaking. The run oh. take, takes you through a 12th century castle as well. It is absolutely stunning. Location, second to none. Um, the racing is going to be epic as well. Do you think it's going to be the toughest Exterra course out there? I, <laughs> it depends on the on the weather. I think the run is going to be the toughest run, definitely. I know that um, Exterra France like to think that they've got um, a tough course, but 
the, the run is uh, I, I, I'm sure that we're going to have a few tears and a few paddies on the run but that, that that's you know, if people come knowing that it's going to be a tough tough race then yeah they will love it and, and enjoy it we're going to have king and queen of the steps so we'll have chip time in who's ever got the fastest overall time uh, going up 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 the steps we'll get a we'll get a certain prize as well so we're expecting some very good racing to go on on the day that sounds amazing but uh, keith one thing which i'm going around in my head right i have been mountain biking maybe twice once i ended up in tears because i fell off and i just hadn't really been before um i would love to do this race because it just sounds amazing but how good do you actually have to be on a mountain bike to enter exterra wales yeah another good good question so so we sat down with david davis at gareth race and we 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 explained the event um and the draw on uh triathletes who don't normally ride or race mountain bike so the mountain bike course has been designed in in such a way that if you ride it slowly enough so there's whips and booms and little tabletops and and, and, and corners if you ride it slowly enough my annual son will, will be able to ride it but if you ride it flat out it becomes very technical so the faster you ride it the harder it will be technically you end up having to try and jump jump the whips and booms so whips are sort of a series of sort of uh, camel humps i suppose what is a good way of trying to explain those so don't worry about it plus we will have um, a and b routes so the a route will be a, a slightly shorter distance but will be more technical there'll be a b route which takes you on sweeping bends and is not very technical but it might take you like 20 seconds more to go down excellent so there are options for mountain bike um those those who have similar mountain bike experience to me i a bit like oh i'd love that kind of thing but i just don't know if i've got the confidence to do it yeah definitely yeah we, we've catered for that we've thought about it and come up with a plan and we'll put it into action keith tell us a little bit more about the actual location of atlantic college and what it is because some people um may never have heard of atlantic college and exactly where it is yeah, it seems to be the best kept secret um, in South Wales, really. So the castle is a, a 12th century castle. It's the only castle that's been permanently um, occupied, certainly in Wales, since the 12th century. And it, it's uh, obviously a Norman castle. Um, it's 166 acres, uh, grade one heritage listed site, both in buildings and in, um, in grounds. And since 1962, there was a, uh, there, or there's been a college, and we take children from um, all over the world, predominantly the age of um, A-level students. They come here again, predominantly under, under scholarships from most um, of the war-torn areas uh, of the world, and we fly them in. Lots of them turn up without any shoes on, uh, only the clothes that they've got on their back, and we give them um, a warm, safe environment food in their belly, um, and a really good education. So we, we um, at Atlantic College, developed the International Baccalaureate, and again, gave that to the world. Um, and we fund predominantly through um, through donors who kindly give to us, um, and we've got um, an endowment as well that we pay for students here. It sounds like a really, really good project and an amazing place to to hold X terror you've mentioned to me that actually you're not doing this race to make a profit from it are you you're doing this race to put something back into the community yeah it is yeah we um i think a lot uh, again controversially a lot a lot of people um are putting on events to, to to maximize profit but i just wanted to go back to old school where I, i'm putting on an event for the love of uh for the love of the sport, really. Um, I want to see Xterra stay in the UK and prosper. So I'm not taking any salary from from this. Um, whatever money we make has been put back into the scholarship program. So we're targeting, um, we're confident that we could probably um, get enough proceeds um, to fund a Syrian refugee and maybe two, two Syrian refugees coming and uh, getting an education here. That is really, really impressive. And in terms of training if someone was thinking right you know what i do fancy x terror next june 
what should they be doing over the winter to to get ready? Running up a lot of steps on it. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a sea swim, so obviously they need to get in the in the sea as soon as they can via organised um, uh, sessions. The mountain bike element, yeah, you need to get out. Um, there's going to be a, lots of twists and turns, um, and I say a lot of booms and whips. So you need to be riding that um, short, sharp sessions as well as you know going out riding for three hours. Yeah, we, but you need to be specific if you want to if you want to compete hard. So I suppose I would follow a cyclocross um, training program, and then running is going to be. But if you can do cross country racing over the summer and race off road duathlons, that's what you need to be doing. Okay, I like the um, yeah, some some nice uh, nice tips there. And so it might be worth entering a cyclocross race or two over winter then to prepare for the mountain bike element. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I would I, w- I would advise that. Our, our course, you you will need to do that. Will there be slots for the world championship in? Will it be in Maui next year? Will there be slots in Wales on offer? Yeah, there will be. Yeah. So um, because it's our first year, we're a category silver um, exeter event. We've got the pro qualifications but we also um so every winner of every age category gets the chance to go to uh the maui world champs um if they don't take it then we go obviously go go to roll down but we're hoping that um after our first two years that we can get up to gold and then we'll have more qualifying slots but that in itself is quite a um appealing isn't it for people who who, who might be thinking oh oh yeah a little trip to hawaii could be on the horizon yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, and um, the good thing is, is that it goes up in every every, every five year um, age categories. There's plenty of chance for you to fight out, duke it out for World Cup. Uh, sorry, a World Championship qualifying slot. Do you have a lot of pro ex terror athletes interested, and in, will they be racing? They they will, yeah. So we have um, uh, Leslie Patterson confirmed to race. Pocket Rocket from from Scotland, two times ex terror world champion multiple winner she comes second this year obviously um she's had some health issues but it's coming back very very strong we have uh, ben allen from australia and jackie slack his uh, fiance who's from england but living in australia so they've already confirmed we are talking to some other exterra stars and some uk based gts stars as well but i can't say who they are at this moment in time if the pros that we are talking to are going, going to come it'll It'll make uh, mainstream news is what I'm trying to get across. Oh, right. Amazing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think we might be able to read into that one. It's yeah, non- yeah. It's a non-Olympic it's, year, so, you know. It, it is. It's a, week, it's a week before the Leeds WTS, but we're, we're in talks with them at this moment in time. So, yeah. Watch this space. I love it. There you have it. <laughs> Some WTS stars potentially racing Xterra Wales. I love this news, Keith. It's great stuff. Yeah. It's fantastic. I think, and and come June next year, all the hard work will pay off, won't it? Oh yeah, undoubtedly. Yeah. You know, we um, you know, we we haven't talked about um, the the Saturday um before the main race on the Sunday. The Saturday is dedicated to kids races. We have um, an outdoor pool as well, where we're going to run children's triathlons as well, um, right up to under 15s. So yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to that. The main event is going to be great, um, great to see you know mass participation. But I'm again, I'm super stoked about the kids. Uh, I can't wait to see you know three-year-olds on balance bikes doing uh, off-road duathlons. It's going to be crazy. I'm, I'm sure that it's um, if you're here on the day and you see me crying. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be because of watching these, these these kids racing on their on their balance bikes. And have you got a lot of interest from some of the local triathlon clubs to you who have got kid sections and they're like, "Yep, we will be there." Yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah, people people want to enter now. They want to enter kids. We are making sure that, that the main event is is up and running, which which we've got that. The next step is to get our accommodation section of the website up and running and we're concentrating on that that should be done in the next two weeks and then when we're through that then we'll get the kids races up, up and uh, online so you'll be able to enter but they are uh, yeah locally lots of people um uk wide from scotland right down to uh, south end on sea you know we're 
people are willing to come and have and stay. That's awesome. And so will you're hoping that all the entrants or a lot of the entrants will actually stay on site then? Is that, is that the plan? Um, student accommodation, so there's 401 beds that we have on site um, that are um, over eight accommodation blocks. Plus I've got 100, 166 acres for camping. Um, so there's plenty of space for camping. Um, we have uh, we have a brand new sports center which has been built at this moment in time. We have an indoor swimming pool as well as an outdoor swimming pool uh, and an outdoor education facility as well. So there's lots of changing uh, and showering toilet facilities. And if they come and stay, they don't have to cook food because we have on um, on site catering. So yeah, you can come and buy up a, a food package as well uh, and, and come and sit in the warmth. We have a, a 12th century dining. Uh, hall that looks like uh, Hogwarts and you can come and have the best pasta party or Harry Potter meets uh, off-road triathlon <laughs> it's, yeah it is it's really wacky um, but yeah you will absolutely love it entry fee wise what does it cost to enter and I guess what do you get for your money okay so it's uh, just shy of £90 to enter um, we, we use an event bright um, to, uh, to manage that yeah so you will get a uh, you get a goodie bag. Um, we have um, Orbea, Orbea Bikes. They're going to be uh, one of our uh, partners or sponsors. Orca as well uh, will be on board. So you're going to have a really good goodie bag from um, from Orbea and Orca. Every entry gets entered into a raffle and you get the opportunity to win a 5K mountain bike. That's quite a good deal. I, I, I think it's a pretty amazing deal. <laughs> And as you mentioned before as well, some of that entry fee will go back into trying to get a Syrian refugee on a scholarship at Atlantic College. Whatever profit we do make, it all goes back into the scholarship programme. Awesome. I say no one's making any money from this at all. Keith, a few little sort of quick fire questions. Percentage wise of like men and women who do ex terra, what are you kind of looking at? Will it be predominantly a male field so it's 525 for the main the main the main event um maximum and at first male entries are coming through thick and fast but all of a sudden the females are taken over we've we, we've had a raft a raft of female entries it's really good really healthy to see i like this news well let's hope we can get some more female entrants as well after this has gone out yeah definitely yeah 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 i i think what our queries from from female athletes and they're worried because they don't they don't own a mountain bike they've got to borrow one so we um we are going to uh do some test events um over the winter so that with my wife um taking some of the courses as well we're, we're talking to some other um some other athletes uh like louise fox and, and different dexterra uk based athletes to come down and take people out on the course and show them you know that you can actually ride this as I said, you know, if you go slow enough, it won't be technical. But you know, if you do ride it quick, then it, yeah, it will be. And we, we, we will give you the confidence that you can come and race, definitely. Brilliant. Will it be a trail run then? Do you need trail running shoes? Oh, you, you will need trail, yeah, trail running shoes, definitely. So, normal wetsuit, uh, mountain bike, helmet, trail running shoes, Bob's your uncle. Yes, it is, yeah. yeah. And you can, um, you can race whatever wheel size you have so there's you know you can ride 26 to 29 it doesn't matter great and keith if on the evening of the 4th of june when the sun's setting what would be a successful yeah. weekend for you that everyone's enjoying themselves um you know we have uh we have a full um weekend of fun so uh, we we want to see we want to see people families coming and enjoying it themselves, so we don't want kids to be bored. Um, we want partners to be bored, so that we we have an art center, so we'll be running films all day, different events. We're talking to a Hollywood star, believe it or not, that we wanted to come and do a, uh, a performance on the Saturday evening, um, which we'd be selling tickets for, and then Saturday uh, Sunday evening, um, we're hoping to have a uh, party and we're talking to some famous rock stars and we're hoping for them to come and play uh and we want i'd say we want everyone to have a fabulous time it's not just about the racing uh, it's about having a really good family entertainment weekend with some really hardcore racing thrown in as well uh we want it to be 
here on the international stage, um, we want people to come back. Uh, and we want people talking about it. We want, and we want to inspire other people to put on similar events. You know, you you, know, you can do it. Um, I started getting involved in events uh, a number of years ago, tentatively stepped in. And if you've got the passion and if you've got some skills in your work that can cross over into putting on an event, then yeah, you, you can do it. Just get out there, have fun, put on events. Keith, you've inspired me, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> you've sold it <laughs> I'm okay. interested I'm definitely going to be coming down race TBC but I will definitely be down there and uh, we will get some good cover of try content it sounds brilliant yeah great stuff yeah if, uh, I, I know if people uh, if people are hearing this um, and they want to get involved then get on our website uh, if they want to come and help yep yeah. We're trying to reach out to people to come and um, be financial sponsors. We've got packages between five and ten k. You know, come and help us. Uh, we it's not helping us; it's helping you know uh, Syrian refugees. Uh, you know, we got packages for for people to come and help us to help other people. So if you go to www.atlanticcollege.org um, and if you type in Xterra on that search, yeah, if you go to um, Xterra Wales on Facebook. Keith, it's been an absolute pleasure to chat and uh, I wish you all the best with the rest of the preparations. And uh, yeah, let's hope we'll see some cover of try listeners on the start line as well. Great stuff. We can organise a challenge for you guys on the, on the day to see who, uh, who becomes king or queen of the, of the steps. Deal. Right, you're on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a point in it for them. There we go. <laughs> right, cracking stuff. And if you're interested in taking part in that event, and I imagine a few of you are, then get yourself over and check it out the quick Google search on Exterra Wales. I think it's going to be a fantastic event by the sounds of things. And uh, Helen's threatening to record some audio down there as well. So if you're going to go down and race, then be sure to let us know and we'll, we'll try and hook up and do an interview with you. Uh, that'll make for a, it'll make for a cool feature uh, during the summer of next year. Okay, so this is bringing us to the end of, of today's episode. I hope you're all having a great time in the run-up to Christmas. Thanks very much for being a listener. And thanks for being part of the community. We've had another fantastic year. We're over two years into this podcast now, and we're having even more fun doing it each week than we were right in the very start. So we're going to continue to do this during the year. We've been we've been brought to you by our sponsors, Team Oxygen Addicts. They're at team.oxygenaddict.com. You can check that out and join the waiting list if you're interested in finding out more about that when the team opens. And we're also brought to you by our patrons. Thanks again for signing up. And if you're interested in becoming a patron and you want access to all the juicy gossip from uh, from Joe Skipper about his race at Kona and you want to hear about Harry Wiltshire and his uh, his to do with Jan Fredino and also his to do with Javier Gomez as well. You can sign up and uh, we'll be releasing the patrons only podcast on the 30th of December. And you'll also be getting an email from me shortly after that with our with our special thank you gift as well. So, yeah, brilliant stuff. Have a fantastic time over the Christmas period. I hope you use it to get some training in as well as eat some extra mince pies. And until next week, I'm Coach Rob Wilby. She's not been Helen Murray this week because she's away having a holiday, the lucky so-and-so. And you've been listening to the Cup of Tri Triathlon podcast. Until next week, have a great Christmas and I will talk to you again soon. Cheers now. Cheers now.